It's hard to believe it's been just over a month since we've received our Zygu X6100s and we've had mixed results with them. They work as radios, but they don't really work with all the features that they promised. But another thing is, is the documentation and the documentation was a little bit lackluster, if you will. And it was brought to my attention that there's a feature on this radio that we haven't known about. That's what I want to show you here today is the feature on this radio and how it can be kind of tricky to get it to work. I'll show you how to get it to work. And let's just kind of go talk about it right now. And we have the Zygu X6100 hooked up. We are hooked up to our microphone. We don't need the antenna hooked up at the moment. But this microphone does have quite a few different features on it. And one of the things on the upper left of the microphone, there's a button here that says SPCH slash lock. And I'm assuming that this is a special channel or some kind of special something button. But anyway, if you just tap it, nothing happens. Tap it again, nothing happens. Let's tap it one more time for good luck. Nothing happens. Until we go into Linux. And let me show you that portion now. So what is this secret that we're talking about? Well, it's called screenshots and the KC9 LDA found out uh, just coincidentally that you could actually do these screenshots. And since then he's working on this really easy system to access your screenshots, but that'll be for another day. But until then, I want to show you, well, the easy way to do things. There are two ways that you can grab your screenshots, and one of them is to log in via SSH, and that's a terminal, the back end of the Linux side, in order to grab this. It, it's a long enough process. But the other and more convenient way would be to log in via WinSCP or Secure FTP in order to grab those screenshots. And that's what we're going to do. So first thing we need to do is we need to find the IP address of our radio, assuming you've already had your radio hooked up to the you know, Wi-Fi. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on system settings. And in system settings, you're going to have a few options. And one of them is going to say WLAN. That's your Wi-Fi information. So my Wi-Fi is now turning on. And once it turns on, my Wi-Fi shows my password or my IP address rather as 192.168.1.193. And I'm just going to type that under host name. Now, port number 22 could stay as it is, but the username, we're going to type in root, R-O-O-T. And this is really unfortunate. The default password for the Zygu X6100 is 123. Fact of the matter is, is if this is connected to the internet and it's on secure, there could be problems in the future. So I have already changed my password, but you're going to type in 123, and then you're going to click login. Now, provided you had all those details correct, as you just saw, it's going to basically log you in and you're stuck in this area with a blank folder. There's nothing here except this folder right here says directory up and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to caution you not to touch or delete or move anything that you don't know what it does because if you mess something up, you're going to have to basically reinstall the firmware for your radio and then, you know, start over again. So now that we're in the, the what we're going to call the root directory, we're going to find this folder here that says USR. Let me pop it up here for you, USR. And when we double click on that, we get a few more folders. And we're going to find this one here that says app underscore QT. And then we got a couple of things here. We have a voice folder, which nothing will be in it because that feature is not quite working yet. But then we have, oh, I don't know, quite a few... <laughs> Quite a few of these files right here, they start with SC and they're BMP extensions. I'm just going to highlight them, drag them, and drop them to my desktop and click OK. Now, once that's done, we're going to be able to see what the screenshots were that I took. And so we're done copying them up. Let me go ahead and minimize this and let's take a look at some of those screenshots. So, for example, my screenshots came in like this. And... Uh, Boy, it's uh, it's definitely this way. So all you got to do in Windows is you just got to rotate it. And then there you go. So that's one of them. Let's see what another one is here. And that's it. Now we, if for whatever reason you needed to take a screenshot, now you know. Uh, if by chance you wanted to delete those screenshots in your app QT folder, again, be very careful. But all you have to do is select them, right click and delete. Now that was really simple and I guess it's a cool feature. I would like to see in the future maybe the possibility of being able to save your screenshots to a USB card via the user interface of the X6100. But until then, this works. I hope you enjoyed the video. You might like this video right here. Until next time, 73.